Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Irrational Passions E3 2019 Xbox Briefing Post Show. I am Alex O'Neill, here to kick off E3 with all of you. We have a lot, a lot of very exciting things to talk about, and it's E3, and it's our first thing for E3. I'm very excited. And joining me right now to talk about Xbox is Mr. Mike Burgess. Hey, I'm. you can find me here live in the cloud, and but uh, you can't talk to me until 2020, actually. Sorry. Uh, not yet. We'll get there, though. Uh, also joining me for these very exciting Tales-related times is my Tales partner in crime, Mr. Scott White. Another limited edition I had to add to my collection. Exactly. Another beautiful game to get lost into and then learn that it's probably just more anime. You know what I mean? Oh, but, but <laughs> it's a chick with a gun, so that's yeah, this totally is... different. And also a sword in her heart. Yeah. <laughs> So I was, get, I was getting a Layla vibe or Lila vibe from Zesteria mm. from the whole chick giving swords out. Yeah, true. Mm -hmm. yeah, good call. And she kind of has a Lila look to her. Look out for uh, Arise Gamers, a Scott and I's limited run, <laughs> Tales of Arise. <laughs> We're going to do Game something Fox. Tales related. Gamers for Arise Up. Or yeah, Gamers. <laughs> Arise Gamers. Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, we're, we, the leak what happened last night. We were excited then even more excited now um uh, let's let's talk about xbox um we're, we're doing uh post shows for for most of the big video game press conferences here at e3 uh we're not there unfortunately but we're excited for everyone that is there we'll be watching along with everyone else after the conferences are over this is the first one we're kicking off i think there's a lot of expectation anticipation for microsoft they had big shoes to fill since sony is not going to be there this year um we all took notes we all have kind of a readout of the the whole briefing it was an hour and 40 minutes long an hour and 30 minutes yeah about hour 40 mm -hmm. uh yeah yeah which okay. there was speculation it might have been pushing two hours i uh, didn't quite get there but I, I thought it went at a pretty good clip yeah um, i think there were there were little bits that were long in the tooth just as a whole but uh nothing lasted too long you're always moving on to something new that was more than likely exciting mm -hmm. um so uh, i thought that benefited a lot uh, I wanted to kind of at the kickoff here talk about some of the biggest uh, surprises. I think a lot of this conference was hurt uh, by leaks, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. We were talking about that oh, yeah. a little bit before we get started. But one of the biggest surprises that I had personally, um, just because I don't, I don't think this leaked, uh, and I considered it relatively wild, was Fantasy Star Online. Yes! Dude, I am super stoked for this. Like, Dude. no joke. I am... oh, that, that was my pop off of the show. <laughs> yeah, like I, I got a little popped off. I'm like, I've never even played Fantasy Star. I was like, this is fucking crazy, right? Yes, because it's this been is, so long. This is the yeah. thing that's been promised before and taken away. Uh, I feel like it was gonna come out. Like there was thought it like came to Vita or something in Japan. Yeah, uh, this game has been around for a long time and it's never come to the West in any mm -hmm. official capacity. And Microsoft is like, no, we're making it happen. It's only on Xbox, mm -hmm. and it's spring 2020. Like, here is a time to look. Yeah, forward to. And it's like free, like free to play. The entirety of the content will all be there too. Like, yeah, yeah it was definitely that pop. Off. I, I, I yeah, like, I, yeah, I, 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 went. Had, I had a pop off that I did not expect. <laughs> and like, considering some of the other stuff that was in the show, like that maybe gotten a more reaction if it wasn't necessarily mm -hmm. leaked or mm -hmm. like known in some capacity, yeah. like. Seeing that, I was just like, no. I like, as soon as I realized it was Fantasy yeah. Star, I was just like, man, I can't believe yeah. it. I think my exact words was, no fucking way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I Very I, loudly. In a, in a similar boat. And like, to be fair, so like my pop-off uh, last year was Tales of Asperia. I like, literally, it's the only time I think I've ever stand up and like yeah. raise my arms like, I can't right now. I need mm -hmm. to leave the room and take a breather. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like that is totally what Fantasy Star was this year. It, it was like a thing that a very specific group of people really, really, really care about, uh, and they're like doing right by it, and they're bringing it to the West in a, in a mm -hmm. really cool way. This uh, is going to be. This was a huge get for yeah. RPG fans, and yeah. like I've played a bit of the English trans, like the fan translated version of Fantasy Star too. And I know some friends who are like huge into Fantasy Star 2. And this is huge. And I'm so excited to like be able to play a legit version of it. I'm yeah. super stoked. Yeah. Another um, 
surprising thing, I think, in the other direction for me was there was very pointedly no Gears of War campaign in this show at all. Yeah. No. Uh, they had which that, I like, thought was kind of a surprise. Yeah. They had like a super it, weird out, art house trailer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just, like, this is yeah. like, what, what is this? Watching like what faces pop out of her while she's going crazy. Like and just... schizophrenic, like multiple personality shit. Mm. Do you think that they needed uh, to show the Gears campaign, Scott, and show us more than what they showed us already? No, um, especially because they made it very clear that in the next co- in the coming months leading up to the game, they have a bunch of things where they show it off. Yeah. Um, I think... People will play for... I think they know that people will play the story for Gears, but they'll stay around for the Horde mode and, mm-hmm. like, multiplayer and things like that. So I don't think they'll... I don't think they need to sell people on the campaign. Okay. So um, And they did They did show, I would say, a lot last year. And what they showed last year certainly gave you the sense that, oh, there's a lot of mystery behind what's happening right now. Like, mm-hmm. there's... That you you should have a lot of questions coming out of this, and we don't quite want you to know what's going to happen next, yeah. um, and who you can trust to some extent uh, of of the original trifecta of characters uh, mm-hmm. in Gears Four. Yeah, I, I I think I don't know. I was since I'm like still a little on the fence with Gears of War, which I'm more sold now. I would say, uh, mm-hmm. all things considered, but I, I was more um, I, I wanted more. I, I I needed to see a little bit more of like what the moment-to-moment gameplay is going to be like for Gears 5's campaign. Yeah. Uh, and if it's going to be different at all. Uh, of what they did show, uh, unless you had something you want to chime in, Mike. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I somewhat agree in the sense that, like, they were, like, going off. And I'm sure this will probably, by the end of this week, this will be a different. But, like, it was weird that, like, we're going to reveal this new, brand new mode that's new for Gears and in a CG trailer and then be like, Oh, by the way, we're, these guys will play it. Like they didn't show like anything for that new mode mm-hmm. in the, in this big thing. And I would have rather have seen more of that, but I'm sure like, I think they said right after they're probably might be streaming it right now, whatever yeah. more of that gameplay of that mode is. Um, yeah. Let's, let's talk about that. Uh, the thing that they did show uh, for gears five, aside from an art house trailer, of Kate's face doing a bunch of whole yeah. weird stuff um, was a CG trailer announcing their new, their big new multiplayer yeah, mode. They, I they feel like they're under the uh, stage. Player. Yeah. They're under the state. They're like, Hey, we got some budget for this press conference moment. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, we're, we're too cool to show this demo on top of the stage. Like, yeah, it's like, they spent so much money for literally a camera pan down and just to have some people down there. It was mm-hmm. kind of a cool moment, though. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I, I was, I was like funny. freaking out. I thought it was. <laughs> I was. What good. is happening? Yep. Uh, and then when you're finally down there, you see all the the high bags. You're like, this is fucked. Um, <laughs> but they they showed a CG trailer announcing this this mode. Essentially, you play as. It, I kind of got the the zombies from Call of Duty vibes. Yeah, I was gonna say mm-hmm. that for sure. That they showed. Um, one is is voiced by Dave Finoy. He does a little bit of voiceover through the beginning of the trailer mm-hmm. uh, talking about how they surrender to the hive collectors um, and they get, they get all egg sacked up kind of like uh, Marcus does in, in Gears of War 4 spoilers. Uh, it doesn't, not really spoilers, but um, then they get pulled into the, the hive kind of nest break free, have to plant a bomb and then escape the hive. The, the whole thrust of the mode is, I guess you finding the place to plant the bomb Stealthing around, maybe trying not to get noticed before you plant the bomb, and then escaping out. Uh, which it was a, I would say it was a good concept trailer of here's what the vibe of this mode is going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, they showed each, like I, I say that they seem like characters in a sense of like Call of Duty Black Ops because they all had very specific faces and models. I think they are set characters that you were playing yeah. and you were selecting. Uh, when you start up this mode and it seemed like each of them has some kind of maybe unique ability to themselves yeah um one character planted the bomb one character had like this lightning knife that they turned on and used uh which is pretty cool yeah um so i get almost like an apex legends vibe from it in that yeah, that's case what gonna, that's what i was gonna say like it, it like you you kind of nailed it on like i got a lot of like uh call of duty vibes and like that zombies mode vibe and even like a little like overwatch but that was because like 
but there's plenty of games now with like where there's characters that just have abilities to use and i simply think yeah. of like what, what wasn't i think it was advanced warfare which i didn't play but that was like the one where like you had specific call of duty characters who like had abilities and i think that was like the same for the zombies mode so i got like 100 percent that and they even said that I think when they were like, "Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna tease like the new things in Horde mode, and there would be characters with abilities in that too." So I think like all of that stuff will just kind of cross pollinate between those modes in particular. Yeah, um, uh, I also think like I uh, I don't know. It, it seems I I try and tie this multiplayer mode into like every major like objective based mode for no good reason. It reminded me a lot of the. Um, Conquer's Bad Fur Day multiplayer mode, uh, Conquer <laughs> Live and Reloaded one, yeah. of like okay. possibly starting at a place, clearing one objective, and then that creates maybe like a new starting point, uh, and then you clear the next main objective, right. and it clears into like a third and final area, and they're enclosed areas that you're completing objectives through. I thought that maybe that was what they were trying to illustrate mm-hmm. when they got out of the initial area, closed the doors, and then they turned around and like, okay, there's still a, a big room full of people at the end. That was kind of yeah. the end of that trailer. Yeah, it seems like um, you're kind of like on the like literally on the run, and since it's called escape, you're like you're trying to outrun this like poisonous gas or something. Yeah, it's a cool idea. I, like I think the big thing a lot of people thought was Gears Five needs something that's new, uh, and Horde mode is great. I think we had this conversation like relatively recently in our Slack. Like Horde mode's great, but I can't just play Horde mode in multiplayer. Right? I mm-hmm. I feel like they need to add more. They need to bring more to the table. It's that's new, creative, and and a new way to kind of engage with their game. And I feel like that's what they're exactly what they're trying to do with escape. Um, what did you think of it, Scott? Truth be told, I've never been a huge gears of war fan. Like it, it, it's been okay, but it's never really gripped me. Um, truth. I, I will play this simply because it's on game pass. Mm-hmm. Um, but like the three V three, I could see if I have a group to play with, like, member like us three or other members of ip or friends i'll i'll enjoy it uh it sounds cool but we didn't really see any actual gameplay of it so i'm very hesitant to put too much worth on just cinematic trailers anymore yeah so it's a cool idea and i think horde mode is like games have gotten away from horde mode I feel so I'm kind of looking forward to actually just shooting yeah. a bunch of waves of enemies at this point because mm-hmm. I feel like Horde, Horde mode has fun. yeah divulged and like evolved to creating other branches of genres but no one really does like a legit Horde mode anymore so I'm almost more excited to try with friends the Horde mode or escape mode and things like that so I'm I'm still on the fence like I'll still try it because it's on game pass Mm-hmm. Um, but it'll be anxious. I'm anxious to see what they show in the coming months leading up to the release in uh, September. Yeah, I, I'll say like the thing I, I liked about their approach with Gears was Moody trailer, and then the director walks out. <clears throat> I forget his name. Uh, apologies, Rod Ferguson. Um, Rad Ferguson. Thank you. Uh, how can I forget? Um, walks out. He's like, Gears Five is coming out September 10th. The and like, all right, let's move on Fantastic. to the next thing. It was like, here's the thing that you want to know the most. It's way sooner than you think it is. Yeah. Uh, it will be here soon. And I like that they're showing very little now with it coming out so soon, only mm-hmm. because I feel like it shows that they're very confident with it. What they've got is something. Um, and, you know, Gears has a legacy uh, that is, is very high in high regard. I've kind of like, I never finished Gears 4. I got to very close to the end and, and got a little frustrated with yeah, it. Yeah, I didn't either. But I did like it. I just, I didn't. I didn't have the thrust to finish it. I didn't want to really, really finish it. I didn't. I wasn't right. as hooked in as I wanted to be. So I really, I really want Gears Five to to impress me. What bummed me out at the end was they said like, "Hey, you can play Escape now in some uh, Microsoft stores," which is just such a weird move. Yeah. Of like, why not put out a demo that's only playable this week? Yeah, like Xbox. a beta or something. Well, they said there isn't there some tech test or was what they called it. Some tech test coming next month. It sounds like. Yeah, uh, like I said, that might just be a like, tournament in August of some kind. Yeah, that might just be their basic multiplayer. You do get to play early, like what was it, four days early or something, yeah. or ten days early if you four get it on Game Pass or. I think uh, it's the new. The I, yeah, I think it's. Yeah. I think it's like the deluxe, and I think it's. 
so that that was something I I, I was slightly confused by because like I think it was before they announced this or one of this they talked about Game Pass Ultimate, yeah, mm-hmm. and how it's all one subscription. Like, is Game Pass Ultimate technically a different thing then, or because I like that's how like the vibe I got when he when he explained that where he said if you have Game Pass Ultimate you can get it in four days early. So it's like, wait, so I need. I, I think to... it's just like the premium all-encompassing version you can get. Um, yeah, right. I think Game Pass Ultimate having that specifically as your Game Pass right. may, it's just, it's just everything. may allow certain benefits, like playing certain games early. Yeah, because that's uh, what he that's what he made. That's what he, that's yeah. what when he said he, Ultimate at the end. Like if you have Game Pass Ultimate, you get it four days early as well. Like yeah, I feel like that very specifically said. Yeah, that. like I feel like that's the vibe it gave me was like okay, so this is ki- technically a kind of different thing like a different tier i guess mm-hmm. i don't i don't i was not sure yeah it could be but. a situation too if you have xbox live gold and game pass then you will still fall into that tier sure uh, mm-hmm. in, in those certain promotional cases but we just don't know yet i yeah. think it just needs that's a what, statement will was. come out that will clarify that yeah. i'm sure yeah um interesting that though because that that certainly implies that they don't want people paying for game pass or xbox live separately anymore they want to hopefully unify everyone yeah. into a month i mean i'm kind of okay with that like I, i'm okay I, with that too I would, but i would i would, I would I'm, t- I'm fine with doing that i just ultimately wasn't sure that's a it's just a weird. very it's like a subtle shift uh yeah. of trying to point people in the direction of like paying per month yeah which I like think a service just, yeah i think it's telling of all things in every regard everywhere future uh, yeah. uh the future um, Google um real quick it mm-hmm. looks the pre-order for the Xbox Live Elite Series Two controllers up. It's going to be one eighty. One eighty, thirty bucks more. Yes, mm-hmm. that's not terrible for all the features it's adding. Uh, I, I think that it's mostly the rechargeable battery and everything. Yeah, with a long battery life, that's huge. Yeah, uh, that's yeah, cool so... too. I I love the. I've held an Xbox Elite controller once. Uh, it was glorious. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm too poor to afford one, but I'll yeah, think about say, one finally always. Have... I, I like don't have that. They seem they seem <laughs> cool, but like I I don't play enough Xbox in regular yeah. capacity to play it. And like I have two Xbox normal Xbox One controllers, and they're totally totally fine for me. Like, yeah, totally. Fine. My uh, my friend worked at the Xbox or the Microsoft store at a nearby place, and he picked up a Elite controller. So I tried it, and it was like it's a it's a it's just a controller. I it's not worth 150 yeah. and now 180 dollars. I I kind of like premium controller. I'm not gonna lie. I like the weight yeah. of it the most. Oh, I do too. I'm not saying it's a bad controller. It's a fantastic controller. I think if it was a hundred, I would be okay. But this is three times as much <laughs> as a single controller. Yeah, it's a lot. It, um, it is a lot for me to justify for a price. single controller. But the Bluetooth is gonna be nice with this controller and. Let's um let's move on off of gears here. Uh, yeah. Wait, and... gears pop. Wait, oh, I was kidding. Yeah, I guess gears pop <laughs> happened. Boy, that was a mobile game. Yeah, <laughs> like, shout I out was to, not expecting it. Shout out to they just made <laughs> Clash Royale. It was like a hardcore like oh <laughs> shit. Yeah. This is like a very mobile game. <laughs> mm. yes, like the first shit. shot they showed was like you opening a box of co- like in game currency. I think. Yep. It was like ooh. All right, okay. I like you know no buts about it. It'll be out soon. We're never going to talk about it again. On this mm-hmm. show. Uh, message received. Um, what was a, another big surprise or a big highlight for for you guys? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just scrolling through with, my notes. With the exception of tail, well, I would have been flipping my shit for tails if it hadn't been leaked. Yeah. Uh, but honestly, a game that I was really impressed by, and I'm really excited to try more was that um oh what was it called was it the RPG deer game time the okay, legend okay. of right i was curious oh, how yeah. people would feel about this one because i was like there's a ton going on here this mm-hmm. is, it looks very very interesting like a meshing of all sorts of different genres and i love the art style to it i kind of got a bit of like a paper mario vibe mixed with dragon quest mm-hmm. it's just all sorts of it kind of reminded me too of um there's a VR game I played uh, pixel rips last year um, where you kind of like interact with objects in an environment that a player is platforming on. Mm-hmm. Uh, I kind of got those vibes too. It's very creative, very, very good vibes too. Um, 
I'll tell you the indie game that stood out to me. Uh, dude, I think it was a little bit earlier. I'm gonna see if I can find it. It was like these two deer. Wait, yeah, wait to the woods. Oh, wait, wait to, to the, the woods. woods. Yeah. Uh, so, I don't. Know. Had that been announced before? Yes. So, well, not not like on the stage. So that's why, like, I I've, I've been I've been following the guy, and uh, they said the game developed by Anthony Tan. He's on Twitter. Mm-hmm. On his mm-hmm. on his Twitter. It's just it's like a game solely made by him. Um, mm. So it it was super cool to see like that get that level of, you know, it was like the same thing where they did last year where they took these smaller games like like, like yeah, tunic, tunic, yeah, and like here it is like right after like some I forget what what the trailer was before but it was a pretty big game and it just went into that and I was like man that's right super after cool twelve minutes the interaction oh, twelve was, minutes looks really cool. yeah. looks very good yeah that could be a, like a good stream game I feel like yeah, we're, like, yeah. It out together that would be yeah. a good like we all play it. And then kind of talk about how we like Ooh, what our yeah. ending was. Spoiler cast right. game, yeah. I totally. think that could be cool. That does look like a very interesting kind of cool game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So like they they had yeah. So that I've been that guy's been uh work like chipping it away at that for a while. Um, and he, really impressed by that trailer. Yeah, the, mm-hmm. yeah. That game has always looked like super cool. And like th- this is probably like the most recent he's shown because like honestly he like it was a kind of a thing where he would just kind of post random random gifs of it on his uh on his twitter and nice. it was cl- and it was clearly like you know he's kind of like chipping away so that was probably i think like the biggest like showing of it and like not and, and in that it actually looked kind of like a video game where other times yeah. it was kind of like you could tell like he was you're were controlling these deers but like what are you really doing besides walking around this really nice looking area where like here it's like all right they're showing gameplay and you're trying to solve mm-hmm. puzzles and their stuff so it was really yeah, cool there cool looks pretty cool that one yeah. looked Spear, oh yeah, Spirit Fair. Yeah, Spear Fair was like the third indie game that I wrote down. That's um, Thunder Lotus too, which did uh, they did Severed, which I am not oh, loving okay. as as much as I I'd hoped I would. They also did Jotun. Um, oh, which okay. Was okay. Norse action top down game, um, yeah, but they but like their art cool. style I think is is just yeah. excellent. And and this... I thought it was the Battleship people maybe because that's what it kind of looked like. Yeah, it, it it has they have a similar look. Um, theirs that's looks cool. kind of like a little bit more hand drawn. I feel like when you look at the cat. Um, model in in that trailer mm-hmm. you, that is like totally their style um, um yeah it was really cool it was like uh this young girl building out this boat and then looks like going to areas and maybe exploring them in a full metroidvania style mm-hmm. um and then carrying these spirits it, like they, it showed her like hugging this deer spirit um but then like maybe taking them to the ferrying them to the afterlife right. uh, and saying goodbye and it was it was very like touching in, in a very yeah. like in a short trailer I got a lot of emotion out of that. Yeah, for sure. Um, an- another quick one that they they showed very briefly, but it's been one I've been following probably for a little while now is Totem Teller. It was in the mm. mo- it was in the montage like they did the idea Xbox montage pretty early on that were mm-hmm. and it basically said like all of those in that montage were launching on Game Pass so that when they launched wherever else. So that's really cool. Mm-hmm. But yes. yeah, I've been, that's like another one where like it's like a very very small team. Um, and they're then they just kind of like post like they've been posting a lot of screenshots and like some gifs occasionally of just like these like it's like this super weird abstract like like almost like a isometric looking kind of adventure game thing. That's um, like very colorful. Uh, I'm trying. Keanu to Reeves. Keanu Reeves. Keanu now. Reeves on the stage. He's in <laughs> Cyberpunk. I still can't yeah. believe Cyberpunk is a this gen game. Like. Yeah, that's why it's next April. So wild. April sixteenth. April sixteenth. That was that was one of the we talked before we started it of like wow. there were some good dates in here. I think April sixteenth, the cyberpunk date. Even if it ends up getting pushed back, I don't think it'd be more than a a little bit. I uh, just because that's kind of CD, yeah, CD it Project posted. Red style. They like push it back a month. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's a that's a really exciting date. Um, just having a frame of reference of when that's going to hit. The, Two weeks after my birthday, just in case anyone wants to get me a. Uh, a birthday present. A belated birthday, birthday present. The same. I'll take um, it. We'll airdrop in the Cyberpunk special edition that comes with real sword arms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, you never know when you'll need sword arms. I'm just saying. Yeah, but yeah, that I, I agree that it's like it's definitely hard to believe, but also like exciting that it's still somehow uh, this gen game. Just like because how like the 
specifically like they did like a lot of close-up face shots and granted i think mm-hmm. those were like pre kind of like the pre-rendered cutscenes. they and obviously like a little bit into that they showed gameplay and like the, the gameplay there looked a little bit more like okay i can see that being a, a video game on these consoles that we have now now but yeah, like, when I mean, you see those pre-rendered scenes that those were the things that were like holy cow like it, the detail on top of the detail on a person's face was like bonkers that yeah that game looks fucking insane yeah. yeah very impressive and and i like that they went with a totally different direction for what they wanted to show this time around a very yeah. moody emotional trailer a lot mm-hmm. of moody trailers very dark um which is cool because i i don't know i think microsoft has always kind of taken a more jovial tone with their shows which has worked for them but with no sony this year we're going to be kind of lacking those very moody trailers yeah, uh, and i think they here. kind of they filled that in here while also maintaining a lot of the fun trailers um we get to see like the uh losing someone uh and and his friend dying and, and kind of the the fallout of those of that event and, and those actions and and kind of the reactions they're in i think it's very telling for some of the stuff tonally that they're trying to do with the game and also like the way they portrayed cyberpunk last year was very bombastic yeah. but i think they did a great job of portraying the effect that that world has on someone mm-hmm. uh, this trailer and it was really really cool if they uh come close to to putting that kind of feeling into the actions that you actually take uh in the final game i think cyberpunk's gonna be something really really special absolutely Uh, what's what's it gonna feel like to yeah i was gonna say what's it gonna feel like to be given a mission by keanu reed i'm just gonna feel really good (laughs) i'm just gonna be awesome yeah because keanu comes out on stage and i get like oh this is like old e3 right here (laughs) like this is like 2009 Mm -hmm. e3 celebrities coming it's fantastic. out fantastic and it, it, it and he's like clearly just having a very fun time and the crowd is like so the, literally, literally everyone was on there yeah, literally everyone was standing up when he was on this that was yeah because like like friend of my a personal friend of mine uh mario rivera is like in the front seat and i know oh. this was not on the list of things he expected to see <laughs> wow. so, like there's probably a bunch of people like front row or in like the the opening that like did not think they would be seeing Keanu Reeves yeah. today, and they're just very stoked about yeah, it. Yeah, they're just like, yo. Yeah, so I th- that was cool. I think, like, it went on a little bit long, but clearly everyone there was, like, just having a good Hyped time. Hyped that Keanu Reeves was there, yeah. And then they got to announce the release date, so that was cool. That was cool. So I have I have a question for you guys. Yeah. Was there, was there something in this, in this uh, that once you, you were – not like you were not expected to be excited about, but then you, once you saw it, you were like, oh, okay, this actually looks pretty great. Is there something in uh, there that, that... I feel like I have a few of those. Yeah. Okay. Minecraft uh, Dungeons. Minecraft Dungeons is a good pick. Mm-hmm. A Diablo Minecraft game. Yeah. yeah. That was the interesting direction. I'm sure. always a fan of those action RPG dungeon explorers, and I've never been a huge... I never adopted the, the Minecraft. So seeing yeah. that, I was like... Okay, I could see kind of kind of a few fun game nights or just chilling on the couch playing some Minecraft dungeons, you know, getting some loot. I could I could see that. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Uh Bleeding Edge was one for me. I uh yeah. I know I, I would bet like my reaction to that trailer cuz I, I guess Bleeding Edge had leaked ahead of time, uh, mm-hmm. but I, I was not aware. Um uh, but Ninja Theory's next game, they've been working on it for a little while already. Uh there is a technical alpha coming June 27th. 4v4 action multiplayer game. Um, action-based combat, not uh, shooting. Um, and I don't know. I really like the style of it. I thought like the characters looked cool. I, I like that it had a lot of color. Uh, mm-hmm. I got Overwatch vibes in a good way. Absolutely. Uh, not, it didn't feel like it was trying to copy what Overwatch was doing, but it looked like it was achieving some of the things Overwatch has achieved, um, which is mm-hmm. cool. Uh, and yeah, I don't know. It looked fun. I like the idea of a 44 action game, and I think that trailer that they had it did a good enough job of showing how if you work as a team and if you put these characters' uh, powers together, you can achieve some really cool moments. Um, so yeah, I, I was actually sure. really into that. Yeah, yeah, um, I got I got Overwatch vibes from that too. Like mm-hmm. like a slightly edgier or darker version of it, not necessarily like edgier in a bad way, but like it definitely felt like a a darker more mature version of overwatch which is cool yeah it's, it's going to be see interesting to see how the retention rate on that is because there's 
like with Overwatch and Apex and things like that, I feel like there's a lot of like hero kind of things coming yeah, out. Sure. Like bigger ones. It'll I'll be anxious to see. I love the character designs. I think they all look very unique and I think it could be really cool. I'm just curious how it's going to really connect with an audience cuz I could see almost a uh what was that one by Epic that tanked uh, battle Oh, Brink. yeah, I know what you're talking no, about. Brink. Battleborn? Not Battleborn. No. Battleborn also kind of one of those. <laughs> Battleborn <laughs> also one of those though. Yeah. That didn't grab on. Paragon? Paragon, that was it. Right. Um, I could almost see it kind of turning into another Paragon. And that's only that's not to say that I don't think it looks like a quality game. I think it's just other games have so solidified their hold on the genre. Yeah, the, yeah, the market. There's a lot of that it stuff might be. Uh, it might be hard for a new a new game to kind of bust into it. I hope it. I, I'm anxious to try it. I think mm-hmm. that was a, one of the Game Pass games as well, so I'll definitely give it a try. Yeah, yeah. Whether or not it has staying power will be another another thing. Yeah, it's it's interesting to think about. Like in at the end of the day, Xbox is the only platform really with like big first party multiplayer games. Because uh, mm-hmm. I'm thinking about like Sony. Like, obviously, most of their recent games are are single-player narrative-driven, but, like, even Uncharted and Last of Us, things that do have multiplayer never take on, like, a Halo or a Gears of War. So if anybody could do it it, with a first-party game, I think it'd be Xbox. Um, But it's just finding that community, kind of like what you're saying, Scott. Um, Let's uh, let's keep going through the list here, because that was kind of toward the beginning of it. We opened with Outer Wilds, which just... uh, Outer Worlds. Outer Worlds, god yeah. damn it. Yeah, I, know, I, did, I, I was like, October typed, 25th. I typed out the same. Yeah, October 25th, release date, um, which is around the time when I expected it. It was mm-hmm. cool. It was like, hey, Obsidian is one of our developers now. This isn't necessarily within that, but this is their next game, and it comes out very soon. Um, and then Bleeding Edge, uh, which will have a technical alpha invite based on June 27th. Um, then Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Um, which is February twentieth, twenty twenty. I'm which, bummed that's next year. It stabbed yeah. me in the heart. Yeah, so no, hard. Gonna be a... Looks but, still fucking beautiful. It looks yeah. absolutely gorgeous. Very cool trailer. Yeah. That's next year. Yeah, it, it it's a bummer. Sure. I, I I like the very different take on the trailer, showing what looks like the bosses of all the areas that you're gonna mm-hmm. go to. Um, really cool. Just the powers that they show. There's like a hook shot thing. Fucking looks amazing. I'm so excited for Ori. Mm-hmm. Um, good to have a date. Uh, Watch so, Ori and the Blind Forest on Video Game Book Club. Yes, I got I got a bunch of people, a bunch of y'all to play it, and I'm glad I got you guys. It was it. so good. I'm so excited for the new game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, then Minecraft Dungeons. Uh, that's like that's the opening. Like that's straight mm-hmm. into it. Um, we got a couple of develop like Ninja Theory came out on stage and whatnot. Yeah, it's uh, but for the most part, that's it. And then Phil Spencer finally takes the stage. And he gets, I feel like, the biggest <laughs> applause he's ever gotten. Yeah. Uh, uh, he lined out the show and talked about 60 games. 34 of them are premiering on Game Pass. I don't know if that includes the idea at Xbox Montage, but I assume it does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd say so. Um, which is cool. Uh, and 14 of them would be from Microsoft First Party Studios. I'll be honest, I felt like they had a lot of games this this conference. They it did. Feels like yeah. Microsoft is making a lot of first party games. Varied games too. Like mm-hmm. it wasn't just shooty yeah. McShoot face. It yes. was, they took they a lot, had of, a lot they, of good variety to it. Yeah, yeah. They they took a lot of time to like have the have the have the fade to black Microsoft Game Studios mm-hmm. presents then fade and they, out. They, like there was a whole lot of that. And like I, I like mm-hmm. that they just had that and not it wasn't the Microsoft Game Studios exclusive. Like the dude yeah, yeah. doing it over and over again. Like i I'm glad they just kind of left that for like I think they just had that voice coming. The over. lower third, yeah. Yeah, and they also dropped the verbiage of, like, console launch exclusive. It was only ever world premiere, or that was it, you know? Like, it was that voice coming in, mm-hmm. um, which is good. I know that that definitely bothered people before. Um, that's when we got... Uh, More from, Fallen Jedi Order. Yeah, Phil, so. Phil Spencer transitioned right into uh, a longer Jedi Fallen Order. I, I didn't get to follow up with you guys. I ended up watching the whole trailer from from yesterday. I'm way in. I like it didn't yeah. I didn't need much more but I am like 100% sold now. Yeah, that um, this honestly like this trailer sold me more than the actual gameplay did in a weird way even mm-hmm. though like this trailer still kind of showed 
some a lot of the stuff that was shown yesterday in some regards like it had it had some other environments that were like mm-hmm. just cool where it's like here i am in like the middle of the ocean like climbing up an AT- atat that has like a bunch of vines on it for whatever reason i don't know but the, the, yeah. it was just like it was a cool environment to be in that's like not necessarily an environment that you normally see in star wars and i like that aspect of it of like it's it's clearly Star Wars because the dude's holding his lightsaber through everything. <laughs> but like at the same time, like it it felt a little different. And I like, guess just that's me personally when it comes to most things Star Wars. I I like the more weird side stories, and yeah. not necessarily and, like the main stuff. And I'll I'll say like I I would see why someone wouldn't necessarily be sold off what they showed, but like what they showed has just been my this idea i've had since i was a kid of like an adventure game as a jedi sure. like so actualized like it was something like very specifically that that had like like in the demo that they showed yesterday at ea play there's a moment where you like focus vision mm-hmm. and you see like a wall that's like a green color and that means you can break it through with your lightsaber i'm like this is exactly my shit yeah right here right now this metroidvania shit is my shit uh, yeah. and like that was all i needed honestly um, I like the trailer that they they put here too. Uh, you climb up an ATAT and it was really cool. Um, I'm still I'm still not sold with it. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, I mostly think the- because I really want to see how they tackle exploration because I'm really concerned that it's going to be a bit of like hallway simulator. Yeah. And I want to see some depth. Like I know there's skill points and that makes me happy, but I want to see a bit of an explanation on the combat. Show the tree. So it's not just like a square, 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 square triangle. Yeah. yeah. Or, it, or something like, I want to see something along that lines. I still, and I mentioned this in our Slack, I would love if they adopted a stance change mechanic like Neo and the old Jedi Academy game have. Mm-hmm. That would really mm-hmm. make me excited. I'm a bit bummed that there isn't going to be a you can kind of choose if you're a Jedi or kind of like a light side, dark side kind of battle. I understand why they're doing it from a narrative perspective, but I think that kind of battle and how you play a game is part of what makes a lot of Star Wars games really cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, like November is turning to be a really packed month. (laughs) Yeah, that's going to be a big game. And I need to be... I need to see a bit more depth to the game before I'm like 100% sold on it. I'm intrigued by it, but I'm not sold on it just yet. Yeah, all fair points. I, I mm-hmm. definitely agree. Yeah, uh, I, I kind of. It's enough there for me, you know. Yeah. Um, we'll see. Uh, hopefully, yeah. we'll see that. Show the tree. I'm Show gonna the start tree. a hashtag campaign. Show the tree. The Jedi tree. Um, the Jedi skill tree. I'm a sucker for skill trees and RPG mechanics. So yeah. show me that, and you can win me over pretty easy. I'll say one of the things I did like about the Neo 2 beta. Skill tree. Yeah, true story. Cool. Um, then uh, we got a trailer for a new game, Blair Witch, coming out in August. Um, and, and I think very I think, weird. I, I didn't get to say when you guys were talking. We, I think we were talking pre-show when you brought it up. And I think like mm-hmm. all, literally all three of us th- thought it was a completely different video game. Because yeah. <laughs> I think I think you. What did which one did you say? I thought it was Outlast three for you th- sure. You thought it was Outlast. I think Scott said Silent Hill, and I thought it was. Yeah. An, I thought it was an Evil Dead game. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Because like that's like that's yeah, like, yeah, it, it was know. so like I, I I got that immediately because like you're mm-hmm. run, he was it, it's first person you're running through the woods and you're running into this weird dilemma dated can't like uh like shack, a house, shack. Maybe. so i was thinking like oh man this this is like somebody who like discovering the evil dead shack that's like now been dilapidated for years or something like mm-hmm. and then it just went into something else completely crazy yeah i i don't know i don't know what to make a blair witch i yeah, it, was I, weird... it was cool to have a horror game in here you know yeah doesn't always a happen really weird get they yeah, brought it back 19 1999 that found footage movie a big deal i guess yeah I, guess, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't see who's making it, but hopefully this actually turns out to be something cool. Yeah. Um, then we have the cyberpunk stuff uh, that we already talked about. Keanu Reeves comes out uh, April sixteenth for cyberpunk. Very, very excited. Yep. Um, April. I feel like gonna be fucking packed next year. Yep. Uh, it's gonna be a whole lot of packed early. I, I think a lot of games are gonna move their release dates out of it. Cyberpunk. 
Yeah, that's that's like a easily one one hundred ish hour game. That's just gonna take a big dent that's out of that. It's gonna month. be a April for a lot of people. For me, yes, you no, know, for, for, like, for me all too. All the hype behind it, the looks of the trailers and everything. You know, you already know that's going to be a game of the year contender for twenty twenty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's really exciting. And like it it's cool because we did definitely got the sense even though a lot of games here were 2020 which we mentioned was uh, or at least I thought was kind of a bummer, uh we get the sense that like the first 4 to 5 months of next year are going to be just as amazing as the first 4 to 5 months of this year, yeah. if not better. Uh and that's wild. Yeah. <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Um and we already got a pretty good fall for this year too. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah. video games just don't stop. Um, so that's when we got Spirit Fair, uh, which we already talked about. Then we got Battletoads. Yeah, we, so we've so, not talked about Battletoads yeah, yet. Yeah, so this is this is our, our, our <laughs> this is why I asked you guys that question earlier because that was <laughs> Battletoads was kind of that game for me. It was really weird because yes, I was like, yes, it was for me too. <laughs> yeah, it was really weird because like they show, of course, like uh, there's all the all the obvious jokes about Battletoads and its lineage and whatever, but like yeah. they they showed. They showed just the the title last year, and I wasn't expecting much. And then they like showed that gameplay, and I was just like, "Whoa, the animations in this, and like, yeah, the like, and it has a it looks pro- really fucking yeah, yeah. like I the production have, like, value, like, not expecting ish vibes. Like, Man, this is yeah, like, cool, really crisp, really good two D art style. Really? Like, yeah, I was very like, I was, good. I was I was like somehow like impressed by that. And of course, I think that the only bummer about that one that didn't get anything. No date, yeah, at all. no really no date. date. Uh, that could be sooner than we think, but if they're not even gonna willing to give us a window, that that definitely makes it seem like it's pretty far off. Yeah. But yeah, like no frame of animation undrawn mm, in yeah, that game. Yeah, it was uh, very, very impressive. impressive. Yeah. Yeah, it's like super pumped. It's so just dumb that it's fucking Battletoads, but like <laughs> whoever's working on that game is really cool. Clearly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They got the right um, people. I gotta go back and watch that trailer like six times to see if any of those fuckers burp. So we'll see how that turns out. <laughs> hey, you, uh, yeah, I was gonna say you're you're welcome, by the way, for the beat to cut uh, ratio. Yes, because we, we got ratio. two we got there two trailers in sure it. it. <laughs> the ble- bleeding edge had it. I'm pretty sure. Border, I think yeah, Borderlands but... had it, and I think maybe one other game had it. I think Gears of War. That, oh yeah, the Gears. Yeah, that's right. The gear, yeah, the Gears uh, escape. Yeah, it's very good. <laughs> Yeah, and when that was happening, I was just nodding my head like, like, yeah. yeah. I knew I, was I, I won that bet, finally. <laughs> um, uh, the next uh, was the ID at Xbox. Or, no, excuse me. I, I skipped a couple things. RPG, uh, uh, RPG, RPG time. RPG was after which Battle. Was, so. Yeah, Legend of yeah which we, we already talked about. Looks cool. Uh, then the montage. A lot of cool stuff in the montage. Uh, I wrote down a couple of Swearies. Next game, The Good Life. Yeah, Totem um, Teller was in that, which is going to be Totem cool. Teller, Killer Queen Black, uh, Felix the Reaper, mm-hmm. Undermine, which was a game I saw at PAX. I didn't get the chance to play, mm-hmm. but it looked That's pretty right. cool. Um, After Party. Um, so a lot of cool stuff. And they're yeah. all launching on Game Pass. So you, if you have Super Game cool. Pass, yeah. all those really cool indie games. Oh, Creature in the Well was also in there. Yeah, that's uh, right. Arkham is... Knight, Metro Exodus, Hollow Knight, and Borderlands Handsome Collections all come into Game Pass today. That's Super all huge. All Exodus yeah. is such a cool get. Yeah, it's um, a good get. What I like too is all these games are super dense. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of big games, so like I feel like sometimes you could argue that there are not enough big RPG esque games on Game Pass. I think this this really mm-hmm. helps that. Um, Hollow Knight, if you've not played it, it's one of the best Metroidvanias, if not the yeah, best ever made. Go play, play it. Um, and then uh, Game Pass on PC. A lot of good Game Pass stuff. Yeah. Um, and so Game Pass on PC, I'm not clear exactly how it works because I don't have a computer. I don't know where you go on your computer so, to get so this. So there's a, there's on Windows, uh, there's an Xbox app you can download. So in the mm-hmm. Xbox app that's in there, I have not looked specifically, but like, you know, when you, in the Windows menu from like your base, your Windows menu, there's like apps you can have. And one of them is just mm-hmm. an Xbox one. So I'm assuming you just go in that. And I know when you click on that, it brings up like uh essentially like a, a tab or a browser like it looks basically like a browser tab of like you know your game like you know xbox news and uh like a store like a store page and uh like your friends list like it's it's kind of doesn't look that far off from the uh the like like the user the interface that's on an xbox one it's just like a pc like in a, in a, in a browser window and cool. so i'm assuming it's just like the another tab in that more or less <laughs> It's just Game Pass now. 
That's probably the weird thing it look like. about this to me seems like um, Game Pass PC and Game Pass console are separate, <laughs> right? If you do have both, if you want to get both, you would have to get Game Pass Ultimate, yeah. um, which they also technically announced that it leaked ahead of time. Fifteen bucks a month gets you gold, gets Game Pass PC, gets Game Pass on yeah. Xbox. One. And on and on e, and since it's E three day, they said it's a dollar, so you can just yeah, spend can get, a buck right now and get and your I, first month for a buck. And I think. Um, when it was posted earlier, there was there was like wording in that that said like if you have that stuff already, you can do that and it converts it to your service to that instead Ooh. of like. So I think it just it just cool. it swaps it to that. I think is what th- like the wording was on that. Like if you want to go to ultimate, you can just put like do that and then it'll change whatever your monthly or yearly current subscriptions are to That's that. That's cool because if you can just do that. Maybe it'll mm-hmm. like pro rate if I have like ten more months of gold, but fourteen more months of Game Pass. Maybe it'll just pro rate the like. So I only pay five months for like that weird yeah. interim. I don't know. Maybe they they've got a system figured out for that. That would yeah. be good to hear. Mm-hmm. Uh, but either way, Game Pass on PC is awesome. Already over a hundred games. It's in beta today. Uh, beta I feel means like there aren't quite a hundred games yet. Um, and maybe not that full catalog mm-hmm. is f- filled out yet because that's how Game Pass launched on, on Xbox One. Mm-hmm. But um, very cool. Like I, I think I it launches for like actually launches in August. I think they said. Yeah, that sounds right. Um, but yeah, that's just you know, I a lot of those games are crossplay too, like Sea of Thieves, things like that. I've already used Game Pass to play with some of my friends that don't have Xboxes but do have PCs. Uh, and this just makes that even easier, I think, yeah. and gives them better benefits from that. So, uh, very cool. Um, yeah. They, man, this next thing that they did was very weird. Uh, they showed a, a new a game experience. Uh, yeah. my, fr- my, uh, my, my, my single note I took for this game was while the trailer was going, and I th- I'm pretty sure everyone had the same feeling, I just said, Earth the video game. Mm-hmm. That was that was my. I thought it was Google Earth, yeah. the video game, like some kind of video game. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, because it was all like satellite imagery and footage of the world uh, taken in 4K, and like boy howdy, did it even look incredible yeah. on stream. I can't imagine oh, yeah. how to look like running in real time in front of you. Yeah. Um, uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. Mm-hmm. So they so, did it. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say it, this is the returning franchise. Also, Mike, like you made a bet about this. Like, there is no returning franchise greater than Microsoft Flight Simulator. <laughs> truly, truly incredible. Yeah, truly <laughs> incredible. It was like it was one of those things where at the at the time, it was uh it was super strange. But now now that I we just literally talked about Game Pass on PC, like and made these next couple games that they showed right after that, like makes sense. Cause like they are much, very much catered towards like a PC crowd. Yeah. They had, they had that pretty smart pacing throughout this. Yeah, they had that. Yeah. And then they showed uh age of empire two definitive edition. Oh, which looks awesome. Yeah. It looks so good. And then it was wasteland three was right after that. Yeah. The Colorado. wasteland three Those are demo all, like, was the wasteland three trailer was not good. I think. Yeah. But... That, that was like confused the entire time that was happening. I was like, I don't know what, what any of this is. But it makes sense, like you said, in yeah. the context of PC Game Pass. Um, uh, Matt Booty came on stage to talk about Double Fine joining the Microsoft first party team, that's, which is very, very cool. That's so yeah. cool. Good get. Yeah, very good get. Obviously, I think Double Fine makes very, very good video games. Tim Schaefer came on stage. Um, but uh, George Cruz, uh, fellow editor, put it the best. This just means Double Fine is safe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, it was cool. It's cool being... to like. I want to say this is like the most they've shown of Psychonauts two in like any capacity yes, or sure. anything. Still no release. Yeah, day, it's still though, no release day, which is a bummer. Nice. But it was like it was cool to see like that much of that game. Of like, I, oh, this is what this game is about. Yeah, As like a huge exactly. Psychonauts fan, it was really cool to see them tying yeah. into the first one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and it like and... it seeing like they. It seemed like you could you could look at it and be like, okay, this looks like that game, but like and like a much more advanced state like much better graphics much like more interesting like you know they seemed like more active kind of gameplay and instead of like i like psychonauts one a lot but i think you know at the it was a game of its time where it was just kind of like it's a it's a kind of platformer where this looked a little bit like there's a little bit more going on which is cool yeah Yeah. very cool and uh the world that they showed the first like brain it looks like that you're going to go into the mad doctor from the first game yeah 
Um, very cool. It just immediately scratched that itch that only Psychonauts can scratch of like these very creative interpretations of the psyche mm-hmm. and what it would be inside your brain. Um, so cool. Um, and yeah, Double Fine is uh, is a San Francisco based studio. I think it's it's fair to worry about the them and money and all that all the time. But yeah, yeah it's good to know that they're in good hands. So. Yeah. Um, I wonder if Psychonauts Two will have any kind of exclusivity because of that. I doubt it I will. Think, I think it'll. I think it'll just be on Game Pass at launch. Is my guess. Yeah, I think it's too far worlds. along. Because wasn't it also a? Wasn't it a crowdfunded game? Yeah, mm-hmm. it was a fig funded yeah. game. So yeah, so I could see it not being a timed, even yeah. a timed exclusive at this point. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think, think they, they probably have to make sure they make good on whatever the fig stuff they put out was. But yeah, def- and, I, and uh, Microsoft's always been good about playing, yeah. playing nice with that. Hey, I, I just, I just think it'll be like Outer Worlds, which opened the, the, the conference. It's just going to be at, on Game Pass when the launches, whenever that yeah. is. That's my guess. Yeah. Agree. Um, uh, Lego Star Wars, uh, the Skywalker Saga. Man, uh, this, this is this is one oh, of those this is one of those reactions I want to see from the Easy Allies because I yeah. this that this that thing of like that opens and it's like it, it just that just cold opens with like a long time ago in a galaxy far far away. Yeah, I, I want to see Jones like be like, "What the oh, fuck are you oh, doing?" Yeah, like so, somebody like yeah, that's gonna be like some kind of pop off or somebody. Then it just immediately cuts to like Lego Lego like, oh, lightsabers like, clashing. Lego like, like, Millennium oh, Falcon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, Dragon <laughs> Ball. Uh, was was shown drag- the the Dragon Ball RPG being made. Project Z is now Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. What a cool name! Uh, I liked so there was a game that came out a long time ago called Dragon Ball Z Sagas. I don't know. Yeah, if y'all GameCube. I, yeah, all, all systems. Yeah, it was PS2, GameCube, Xbox. I played on PS2. Uh, it was a very inarguably bad video game, <laughs> and I loved so- it. Because it was a Dragon Ball like action RPG, right? Where you leveled up and you went through the story, and it was awesome. And I, I was like, this is bad, but I like this so much. I think that someday someone will deliver on this this concept. I think Dragon Ball Z Kakarot could be that. Uh, I was getting a little little chills during that. I'm not gonna yeah. lie to you guys. I mean, it's... I want to believe. I'm just hoping it doesn't end at like Frieza. Like yeah. all the all Dragon Ball video like, games, yeah, Dragon Ball. That was that was my problem. I was just like, man, this like visually looks fantastic. Mm-hmm. Even like like they showed brief snippets of combat, so I'm curious like to it see. It was that. very Tenkaichi. Yeah, like. yeah, yeah. I'm curious to see what like that how that plays if it's any more than just kind of dodge some shots and then run in for some like mashing stuff and then repeat. Mm-hmm. I'm curious to see how that expands, but it is kind of it's definitely that thing of just like. Man, I'm watching a Dragon Ball Z trailer in 2019 and watching the the Saiyans fight each other and Frieza like fight again, which, again. <laughs> yeah. it's like, and you always will be. <laughs> yeah, I know it's like this internal, eternal like you it's know. Like how loop. many times can they retell the exact same story? The yeah. first four <laughs> seasons of Dragon Ball yeah. will be the rest of your life forever. Yeah. <laughs> like, <sighs> it's like, and it's I yeah. get it because like even as like a, this with my nostalgia even with my nostalgia for dragon ball z a lot of like that is some of like that's like peak dragon ball z in some regards like 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 there's definitely like i think cell saga is also fantastic but like anything past cell saga i don't think is really worthwhile to make a full-fledged game out of yeah Um, but i I feel like i just we've literally played those same sagas probably about 15 times now yeah yeah for for literally like decades want to play it again yeah especially no, I, if it I ends totally like agree. frieza i'm yeah, like I, agree. I love the store like i love the anime i love dragon ball z it'll all have always have a special place in my heart dragon ball z fires i will always get a new one but it's like in 29 well 2020 when this game probably comes out right yes. do i need to play through on how oh goku gets has to fight his surprise brother and yeah you do if you get to fly around and do side quests for random villagers because that's all i've okay. ever wanted <laughs> i'd be okay with that 
Can yeah. I get, can I get I, the Mondo? I did that in Legacy can I, of can Goku. Can I change different outfits and can I put a Mondo Cool shirt on Goku? If yes, so, can I, if I want a Mondo or, Cool or, shirt. Or the bad man shirt. Bad, if I, can I get a bad man shirt for Goku? If so, I'm in. That was Vegeta. Vegeta had the it's bad man yeah, shirt. I know, yeah, yeah. but even so. But like, we're putting it on everybody. Just put Pickle it on everyone. Bad just, man just shirt. Give, yeah, just give everyone. I and Legacy of Goku also very good. Uh, yes, Scott. I don't know. I just like to give a little pause because I I agree with everything said. It's absurd. Please uh, let us at least play a different yeah. part of Dragon Ball history. Uh, play through the original Dragon Ball mm-hmm. would also be very good. And like, and, and it's like hopefully it's you know entirely possible that it is that since this was kind of like you know this was like the first trailer and revealed the actual name of it. Mm-hmm. So we could totally have more, and that'd be cool. But yeah. I don't know. I, I want to believe like, no. They need to take it from like Raditz all the way through Super, and I would be fucking stoked. That'd be wild. Like, let yeah. me do like an action RPG fighting against 40 Raditz hour. Like, yeah, that'd, that'd be like, that'd be RPG. way longer than that, I feel like. That yeah, would be, be awesome. I would be sold. Be like, I'd be like, 80, fuck 90 yes. hour RPG. But yeah, if I'd... it ends at like Frieza, so. I'm going to be like, fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and it most definitely I mean, would. I, I'd be cool if it even just went through like Cell Saga and went to like the end of Cell Saga. I'd be like, okay, then I'd be more interested. But like, if it did all of it, like went through Z and Super yeah. and everything, that'd be, that'd be pretty nuts. Yeah. Um, uh, we got 12 minutes next. Uh, interactive Thriller. Very cool trailer. Yeah. I was like mm-hmm. way into the style. Yeah. It's like, this Very is like cool the kind of like $20 indie game that I would like fuck with. You know what I mean? Like oh, this yeah. I would get way into this, like headphones on, leaning over the computer screen, uh, like two inches from the screen. Like I really like this. I got tons of vibes of some of my favorite puzzle games, like uh, like Ghost Trick, et cetera, et cetera. Um, really excited to see how you interact with that and how you can change the course of things. If there will be like dialogue options, or it'll be things that you can lift, pick up, and do. Uh, seems like it's a twelve minute time loop mm-hmm. um, where someone comes to kill your wife for possibly killing her father. Uh, wife or girlfriend, and uh, you have to stop it. You have to get the best ending mm-hmm. or an ending. We'll see. Um, very excited cool. about that. Yeah, it'll be cool to see. Yeah, it was a it was a really cool concept, like delivered exceptionally well for in a like two minute trailer. You know what I mean? Um, Annapurna with... making another damn that, good game. Is that Annapurna? Yeah, damn. yeah Annapurna's doing twelve minute. They're really knocking out of the park. Oh, um, uh, we got Way of the Woods, which we already talked about. Then we got Gears Five. Um, and then uh, we got all the gears. Getting five Terminator, talk. you can play as Terminator. Yeah, or something. weird Terminator DLC. <laughs> it, it was kind of it was kind of fun to see just a Terminator holding like a chainsaw gun. Chainsaw gun. Along. It was very like, all right, fun cool. To see. And you it crushed like the skull of a locust. And it was yeah. like, all right, <laughs> yeah, why not? Fuck it, you know. Yeah, why not? Moments. It's a fun crossover. Gears has not really done a lot of fun crossover, so that was mm-hmm. cool. Except for Ice T, but really, what else do you need? Um. Two Xbox One Elite controller we already talked about. Dying Light Two um, got another gameplay trailer. Uh, you play a character named Aiden. He is infected um, From, somehow. And our boy Troy Baker. Troy Baker. Was that his... Troy Baker? That was Troy yeah. Baker doing the Looking voice. Looking yeah. a lot like his character in Infamous Second Son. I'm just saying. Delson coming back. Yeah, Delson. Look, I mean, he was wearing the same kind of outfit and everything. Bummed another 2020 game. I was really yeah. hoping for that one this year. Um, but Dying Lights, uh, the original did amazing in January, so I'm hoping spring 2020 will also take off See, do very well. That yeah. and that's gonna be that's kind of nuts now. I just realized that's like that inside right next to Cyberpunk. Yeah, and Cyberpunk are gonna face off. <laughs> it's not good for Dying Light. <laughs> yeah, that's what I would say. Dying Light's very good, real. but it's not like you know, I don't know if that's a 10 mm-hmm. out of 10 game. I'm being but I'm real. Really I, I, to play it, it. Seemed, it seemed like Logan was like the one stand at our site for Dying Light. I, so I love Dying Light as well. He'll be, he'll be the one Light's dude really being good. like over here playing it while we're all doing, playing Cyberpunk, but hey, yeah, I'm sure he'll hate Cyberpunk, so you're yeah. right. Um, Forza Horizon 4, uh, love no new Forza this Man. year, it seems like this, it's they, Lego. This DLC getting... was, was like the thing that would make me actually play that game. <laughs> Same. Yeah, Lego DLC, very cool. Uh, super, like everything is awesome from Lego Movie playing, very fun. Like even like the Lego people animate like they do in the from the movie, like the weird like stop motiony kind of animating, yeah. super good. Uh, that's out this week, which is cool. I again, I, I really appreciate their one. They're not being a Forza this mm-hmm. year is good because it means like when they launch on next gen next year. It's obviously going to look that much better, yeah. but also it does certainly lead cre- like lend credence to the idea that Playground is working on a new fate. Uh, yeah, and... I think I think there there's definitely yeah. going to be some people 
that were definitely a little bummed that that was like the one time playground came on the studio uh, on stage and like he's like here's some lego dlc for forza all right bye like I, yeah i definitely think there's a lot of people expecting to see fable and we got nothing so the with the lineup they have here uh over the next like up until scarlet launches and like us clearly only knowing that uh, Halo is launching with Scarlet, which we'll get to. Yeah. Um, that makes sense, because then they have plenty yeah. of room to surprise us next year if Fable is going to launch with True. Scarlet. Um, uh, we got State of Decay 2 free DLC out uh, today. Um, uh, two new stories uh, in the new area. State of Decay Heartland. I don't know if that's enough to necessarily get me to actually go play it, uh, but it's a cool idea. I like that they're still adding to that game. Yeah. Um, uh, then PSO two happened. Trailer, yeah. Cool. I, lo- I love the the super Dream easy trailer. trailer that they played because it's like, boy, this game does not look like this, does it? <laughs> <laughs> it's very true. I know for a fact that it doesn't. Um, it's this next one, maybe you guys can help fill me in on. Uh... I, I did Google. I think it's one of those. Okay. Co- I think it's a Korean free to play game. Yeah, yes, Smile Game is a developer making Crossfire X, which is coming for the first time ever to Xbox, which is apparently a big deal. Yeah, so it so I googled it. I googled Crossfire game, and it is it is a ten cent, and like another developer oh. game. So it's like a very big like China first person like shooter. It's kind of like it's kind of look from like the screen. I didn't go watch a video, but I saw screenshots, and it looks kind of like a Counter Strike type game. So I think it's like a very big thing in China and like probably Korea and like Eastern uh, uh, countries. So okay. I think that's cool. that, like it was definitely it was definitely like a thing where I think you were not you weren't alone when like that mm-hmm. that like trailer shut off and like Phil Spencer like said the name and I think he was expecting like a bigger applause and everyone was just kind of like what and like in the crowd and then the trailer ends and it comes back and like huh. kind of hear like a very mild like hmm. I just As had a, no idea what kind of game it was yeah I think is that it was a first person people. shooter yeah it is a, it is a first person shooter okay. <laughs> it's, it's basic, like I said. It's basically like if you if you're familiar with like Counter Strike, it it kind of looks like that, like a Chinese version of that, essentially. Mm-hmm. At least from at least from the screenshots I saw. Like I didn't, like I said, I didn't go look at gameplay, but like I searched Crossfire game and like that came up and just like in the corner of Google searches, it just had like a very Counter Strike looking first person shooter stage. So cool, I guess. Oh yeah. Apparently, um, as just a brief aside, IGN is currently having exclusive gameplay of Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, and it seems like a wide open world, fly around wherever you want, and mm. Goku's fishing right now, so it's yes, dude, game. sure, yeah, you had me in fishing. Goku fishes. So, and he just pl- literally plugged in his tail to fish. He oh. took it out of his like belt and stuffed it in his butt, and he's fishing with it now. Tailed Goku is back, confirmed. Damn. Okay. I'm in, dude. So. That's all I needed to hear. Um, I I just like I like a weird game or like a RPG game that can be weird that digs into the weird parts about Dragon Ball that are super fun that other oh, video Goku games have to fish. not done. You know what I mean? Um, after Crossfire X, that's when we had our first Namco Bandai blowout with Tales of Arise. Yeah, showed looks showed, so good. Uh, a handful of characters looks like two protagonists, one male, one female, which has been kind of a theme for the series for a little while now. Um, say for Berseria, um, uh, the theme of breaking free was was brought up, uh, and they had a guy in a mask at some point break part of the mask off, and we got to see his face. He looked very pretty, like you would expect from an anime video game. Yeah. Um, uh, the male character drew a female. This is, these are the notes that I took. Male character drew a fe- drew a sword out of the female character's heart. <laughs> I was in, and they also showed like open world combat, not breaking out into like little rings to fight, but just fighting things mm-hmm. loose in the world. Uh, which well, is this a- game is made by or like the director of this game is the same one that did God Eater Three because he joined mm-hmm. the Tales team, so that kind of that makes sense a bit. Yeah, and this is the first one natively being developed for next gen platforms like xbox yeah. and ps4 uh berseria was on ps3 so this is obviously a big technical upgrade a lot of particle effects in yeah. the yeah. trailer unreal engine 4 baby looks pretty yeah looks very very good i was very impressed with what mm-hmm. we saw even if it was just a little bit um said 2020 um it's cool to see tales come full circle to like the big budget jr oh, excuse me jrpg yeah. it deserves to be 
it, it's um, going to be really interesting to see if they try and do a simultaneous release because we have yet to have a simultaneous release for a Tales game. Yep. So I'm and, anxious to. And that getting pushed into like February or January of 2021 after Next Gen is launched is exactly mm-hmm. what I could see hurting it. And I hope that yeah. doesn't happen. You know what I mean? That game deserves all the attention it can get. Oh, yeah. Um, Borderlands 3 got a trailer. Um, <laughs> Borderlands 2 has a new DLC expansion available now, which is kind of wild. Yeah, uh, I think that's, that's kind of cool, honestly. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Um, it's they, free... that had been hinted at for a while. Yeah, it, it, um, it, uh, it for leaked... at least the past couple of weeks. So <laughs> yeah, it, it, I'm down. It leaked on the Steam page. Uh, okay, I hadn't heard that's about what, that's that. What happened? Yeah, I like stuff like that. I think that's cool. I've only heard of like one other instance where something like this happened, and I don't remember what it was. Um. But yeah, expansion uh, Borderlands Two is available now on Game Pass um, through the Handsome Collection, mm-hmm. um, and the expansion for that is free. But you need Borderlands to play it. So um, there is the next is the big From Software game again. Hurt, hurt. I think this game was hurt the most by leaks. Oh yeah, because uh, because it is certainly more of a concept. Um, George R. R. Martin, Miyazaki, From Software, uh, and we got a nice a CG trailer. W- looks very similar to what you would expect from like a From Software opening uh, CG yeah. movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, Elden Ring, uh, no whisper of a date on that one, so that could very well be next gen. Uh, yeah, but more than likely. It's Boy a cool, howdy! It's, yeah, it's a cool, it's a cool, like trailer. But yeah, like you said, it was definitely like hearing hearing that talked about like for mm-hmm. the last like multiple weeks on podcasts all over because it got leaked out. It the, was kind of like, like yeah, uh, all of. It. All of like what uh, George R. R. Martin does, I think, for world building and story and lore, uh, complements mm-hmm. exactly what From Software likes to do and what's it likes to write out in their worlds mm-hmm. um, so well, so perfectly. Uh, I know we already kind of two weeks ago went through the hype for this and and what this could be, but I don't want people to lose sight of like this is really really exciting. Yeah, uh, yeah. few people, few game developers, at at all make as interesting worlds. Uh, through their lore and through their design as from software yeah if, if you ask me i would even put them above naughty dog as like conceptually and concept arting out worlds of like oh, I, I would i'm right there with you i completely mm-hmm. agree with that they're not the, as di- they don't take a direct route in their storytelling but their lore and their how well fleshed out their individual game worlds are i think are exponentially higher and better or more well done than Naughty Dogs, like Uncharted games and stuff. The best in the biz, as far as I'm concerned. So hearing that, coupled with one of the, obviously, biggest fantasy writers of the last decade, easily. Uh, when he really, wants to write. Anyway. When he wants to write, uh, is really cool. Um, so yes, I am super, super excited. Uh, mm-hmm. So, um, But not a lot to talk about. Uh, then we, we get Phil Spencer for the last time. Uh, kind of coming through the close. This was at the hour and a half mark, and I was hour twenty two mark, I think actually. And I was like, boy, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> I, was, like I was taking a talk. sigh of relief. I was like, whoo, that was a lot of stuff. Um, Phil talks about uh, launching XCloud, um, so people at E three are going to be able to try it um, that weekend, this weekend, um, and uh, you can. They they talked about you can make your Xbox console uh, XCloud server which I don't necessarily know what the benefits of that mean in mm-hmm. terms of gameplay. Um, maybe it means a better connection or less latency, things like that, that we would yeah. want That'd be my uh, from streaming. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, at the very least, he seemed excited about it, so it seems like it could be a big a big deal. I'll we'll have to kind of wait and see through the weekend um, or through the next week. Uh, it's coming in October, uh, and it is starting uh, beta soon, I think. I think, I, think maybe... the, I think the beta is in that October... As well. Okay, I think so. Okay, um, so yeah, XCloud, uh, which we're all assuming is gonna be coupled with Game Pass to some degree, yeah, uh, or at least Game Pass will let you take advantage of XCloud, uh, to play those games. We will have to wait and see, but yeah. not a lot of details. I, w- I was a little bummed. Mm-hmm. I think that might be an easier thing to talk about in an interview, though. Yeah, uh, I would definitely uh, recommend. Yeah, and I, oh, I, I, yeah, and I think, and I like you said, it'll definitely be easier to talk about in an interview, and also like we're gonna have a bunch of other press that are at the conference come out soon and be like, Hey, I got hands on this. So this, this what it's like, I think like that, that I think that ultimately is going to be much more valuable than anything they can show 
on mm-hmm. a stage like firsthand, like people like having it in their hands and playing it and seeing how it actually feels. I recommend everybody and how it does with their individual internet connections. Right. Yes. That, 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 that would be scale with that'd be, various... next, that'd be the next thing for sure. It's like how it actually handles in the in home. Mm-hmm. Anybody's home. Uh, I'd recommend everyone listening to this go uh, check out the inevitable uh, Jeff Grisman, uh Phil Spencer interview. They do it every yeah. year at E3 uh, at the Giant Bomb Post Show. It's always excellent. Um, they have a very good rapport they've built up over the last few years. So uh, that is where I will most likely be learning more about xCloud. And Same. you should. Um, then we got the thing we've all been waiting for. Uh, it's time to talk about the next Xbox. Project Scarlet. Uh, and he, I, I like that, you know, he kicked off. It was like right after the xCloud thing. He's like, all right, let's talk about our next console. Uh, of like, hey, you know, we're not beating around it. We got mm-hmm. our nice very sterile tech announcement video yeah. with a look bunch of these, developers. Look at these devs. We got some devs. Uh, got we got, some, we got some hardware engineers. Check them out. They had the guy who was on stage uh, two years ago to talk about uh, the Xbox One X um, mm-hmm. in there as well. I believe he's like one of the engineers. Teraflop for, guy. Uh, Teraflop man. Uh, Mr. Best Teraflop. Um, something something big pixels. Uh, they talked a lot, a lot here, a lot of stuff. I don't know, grain of salt. I'm, I'm kind of in that, in that space. Uh, faster load times. They did talk about, uh, which is obviously all we've heard about Sony. They talked about uh, using an SSD as temporary, like RAM Virtual on board, RAM, which is pretty cool, honestly. Yeah. Uh, that is like a cool technological thing. They threw out a lot of like buzzword mm-hmm. type things like that. Yeah, the concepts um, are super cool, though. Yes, um, talking about pushing 8K. Uh, 120 frames per second. Um, whether those two things can happen simultaneously, we'll have to wait and see. Um, but uh, obviously, very exciting stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I noted here, it sounds like you guys do, very similar to how they announced Scorpio. Yeah. Um, and it worked. Like that worked really well, yeah. I think. So, um, and they it's their, just they called their, Holiday their... 2020. Project Scarlet coming out Holiday 2020. We know when Next Gen starts now, uh, next, which is. Next Gen starts. Year. Holiday 2020. Um, then uh, Phil Spencer came in on stage one more time just to say, here's Halo. Uh, and we got a nice little in-engine Halo Infinite yeah. trailer mm-hmm. that kept going and going. I was, like, that, really excited every time it, like, kept going. <laughs> it, honestly, I, I expected more, to be honest. Like, I expected, mm-hmm. like, yeah. I am I am going to be, I'm going to see some Master Chief shoot some aliens or shoot something. But it yeah. just kind of was like those two dudes in the ship. Like I like I like the tone of it overall. Like it, yeah. It was cool. Like the cool reveal of like this guy just being trapped on the ship all this time, and like and then like of... yeah, the time cut that happens right in the middle. Yeah, and then mm-hmm. like you know, when it went to hell, and we know how long it's been. Yeah, it's and then cool. he like then he like wipes, and the Master Chief is just like floating in space. We don't really like know that why. Even this this dude knows who Master Chief is. Everyone knows who Master Chief is. Yeah, it's it's like. Uh, <laughs> The, like this trailer like gave me more questions than like answers in a lot of ways and like i liked it but it was also just like all right where does this th- where does this where take place <laughs> like where where are we going like where would it take place like was you know was that mm-hmm. halo in this trailer the ha- the original halo that he blows up and like is this like some weird like offshoot of like this takes place after halo one some mm. some are some like are they like somehow splintering off that and like starting a new set of games how long has it been is also a big yeah big vibe right yeah now. and it's like you know he's you see him obviously you know pulling the chips out back and forth and like cortana is a thing you hear her voice in the trailer at the end and it's just like what role is she in this and like i was just like it it was it's that thing where i was just like i wanted to see more but I also like what they show, and it made me mm-hmm. like more more interested in Halo than I've been like you know, since it, the original yes. trilogy, like yeah, since that original trilogy. Yeah, very mysterious. Yeah. Uh, what yeah. did you think, Scott? I, I, I kind of um, mirror a lot of what Mike said. I wish I would have we would have seen a bit more, kind of even a general gist of the gameplay. Yeah. Show me what it's like um, to shoot a gun. Yeah. But or an idea like when this takes place is it a branch off is it supposed to be a continuation of halo 5 because we were supposed to get a halo 6 at some point like what's it where's it going to be 
I'm it's cool that it's a Scarlet launch title. Um if it is with it being a Scarlet launch title, I think it shouldn't have been shown off or teased last year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um but yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll get it. I mean, it'll sell well. It'll be a great launch title for the for the next box and uh yeah, it's a, it's a very Breath of the Wild move. It's smart, I think at the end of the day to have this there day one. Mm-hmm. Um and I think if it's not, that is definitely make or break for that console. Uh, at least it's... at the gate. One thing I'm going to say, next year we might, like, for Game of the Year 2020, we might have Last of Us going up with a new Halo against Cyberpunk. Like, yeah. it's yeah, it's going to be a rough and tumble year next year. It's already yeah. shaping up to be. Yeah, yeah that's a lot. Compared to this and year, Ori too. And the Will of the Wisps. Possibly Elden Ring. Ori. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. I'm. It's it's video it's, games. It gets it, it gets you really excited for the future of video games. Yeah, dude. Yeah, man. Um, that was the end of yeah. uh, Xbox's press conference, Microsoft's show. Um, let's let's go around, uh, give the show a grade. Uh, we started a new uh, show endeavor. Uh, now i myself and hopefully more editors in the future going back, uh, grading all of the E3 press conferences and other dumb things mm-hmm. that we're gonna watch. Uh, with a letter grade, what would you give this show, Mike? Um, I'm gonna give it um, a solid B. Okay. Um, I think overall, like, I there was like a game like besides, I would say probably some of like the like the more like hardcore PC stuff they show, like the Flight Simulator and mm-hmm. like Wasteland and like uh, some of those games. Uh, they, they weren't really for me. I don't really play those like mouse and keyboard. I'm not really big into like mouse keyboard games. Um, but other than that, like every game I saw, I was like at least like interested in in some capacity, especially like all of their first party stuff. But again, it was that thing of um, some of the stuff I feel like they could have, I would have liked to have seen just a tiny bit more of in terms mm-hmm. of like what the what what is the what is the game part of this, or um, and also the fact that like a lot of it is 2020 like. You look at the the first party Microsoft offering this year, and it's Gears, Gears Five, Gears Five is September, and like there's not anything else. I'm pretty mm-hmm. I'm pretty certain. Like there's definitely going to be other games on there, and like it's nice that you know Outer mm-hmm. Worlds will be on Game Pass, and that I'm sure there'll be other stuff like that as the year goes on, and even as E3 goes on, we might see some of that stuff announced at other places potentially. Um, yeah. but it was, it was, yeah, it was just like, it was a solid show overall. Um, cool game shown. There's definitely some things that linger, but I think maybe that was intentional because they know next year is going to be a much bigger year for them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, Scott, what'd you think? What'd you give it? Um, I would have to say a solid B as well. I think the leaks really hurt it. Um, mm-hmm. I think had we not known about Elden Ring, had we not known about Tales, those would have been two big, like, huge reveals for them. Um, a lot of 2020 titles, like, outside of, okay, it's cool that X- Project X Cloud is coming theoretically this year. That'll be cool to see what it does, but I don't know how that will necessarily impact games. Um, and, yeah, we'll have Gears as an exclusive, but outside of that, it, there's not much this year. Um, I think it has a very strong year coming up with 2020, but this year it was. It seems like it's still. It, it's a very what's left of the Xbox One and its legacy kind of thing. So I would say it had some really good stuff. I love that uh, Fantasy Star Two got announced. I thought that was very cool. They had some really cool indie titles that were released. Um, RPG time as an example. Um, but I think overall, solid B leaks heard it. Not much this year, um, but great pacing. I will give Microsoft credit; it had a really good pace to the conference. I don't think there was ever a point that really dragged, which mm-hmm. other years have. So for, for as long as how it was too, you know. Yeah, I think they did a really good job with pacing and just games, games, games. So. Hmm. Uh, I would probably give it a P- B plus, um, a sharp B plus. I was thinking about A minus, um, but I think there was nothing that 
I stood up and yelled about. That's that's a territory for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Kingdom Hearts and Tales of Vesperia were that for me. Uh, B plus, I would say I give it the edge because I I saw a lot here that I had never seen before that I was really excited about. Um, I think they 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 literally covered what I feel is every genre of video game. Yeah, throughout this conference, they really did. It, from, Microsoft has come a long way from shooty McRoid guy. Yeah, from three four um, years. But they had that too, if you wanted it. Yeah, uh, exactly. So I, I, I think that's cool. I think there was like maybe everything but sports games. Uh, I don't know if there was a sports game there. Yeah, but I um, uh, which is fine, honestly. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I saw a lot of indie games that that I was really excited about, which is cool. It's always points with me. I think like mm-hmm. Spiritfarer, um, the way way to the woods, uh, very very big picks for me. Ori having a firm date for that. What what I liked and what gives it the edge for me too is that I feel like Microsoft wanted to tell you when things are coming. Uh, yeah, there's a yeah. lot of that. We got a lot of more specific dates here than I think we've seen for a while. Um, even if they, there's still like a lot of early 2020, a lot of spring 2020, I think they really did try and tell you or give an expectation as to when a yeah. lot of their th- the things they were mm-hmm. showing. Up. Yeah, and um, I, I, th- I think they were able to pull that off because we know now that next gen is next holiday. So like, a lot of the stuff yeah. they're showing now is probably going to be just like stuff that that is going to come out next year, but also probably be cross gen in some capacity. Yeah, yeah, and they've they've doubled down enough on their commitment to to knowing like backwards compatibility is going to be yeah. there and going to be there forever. It's not that going was away. strange. They didn't touch. I'm surprised we didn't get any backwards compatibility talk. I think That's we'll get that story. when we unveil the console. Yeah, like officially. Be, well, they're, they're, well yeah, I'm like, just talking about like three additional any new 360 games coming to xbox oh, one sure. yeah i think like that stuff is just it's just going to keep coming you know yeah. um they're just not talking yeah, about yeah. it that, i definitely conference. but i definitely think that'll be a big talking point next year and be like and all of your game pass games will work immediately on scarlet like and you're all your backwards compatible 360 mm-hmm. games all that's just going to be there again yeah. you know all of your xbox one games library that you've bought mm-hmm. usually are just going to be on scarlet yeah um like it, as long as they're they're kind of setting themselves up to tee off with that of like hey if you bought this game on xbox one digitally you have it on scarlet already and it has better load times and it'll run better and it'll look better already it's yep. already there mm-hmm. um, so it's like just buying the new console you're getting a better experience all around for the games to come and the games you have uh they're teeing themselves up for that um and they're teeing themselves up for a really strong next year next uh like, yeah. in the future as a whole uh so i give them a b plus uh good show uh mm-hmm. great show i would mm-hmm. say regardless um thank you for joining me gentlemen uh this has been fun um thank you to microsoft for putting on such a fun show uh next up on the schedule is uh square enix yeah next tomorrow night uh tomorrow night i don't know if they're gonna they're gonna edge in the catch-all show before then ubisoft is next actually right oh bethesda's well Bethesda's we're not t- doing a ubisoft yeah, we're not doing ubisoft. separate shows for ubisoft some of these is... other ones because like bethesda right. is technically like in an hour from where we're yeah, recording bethesda this. and um and devolver then, like, tonight yeah uh, like, yeah i'm thinking of our what's our next post show that people it'll will be see square us which square, square, then. square will um, be after uh whatever square ends. yeah after their uh after their conference tomorrow which will be hosted by yours truly yeah scott white will be hosting that We'll be talking about fantasy, which yeah, apparently, yeah. supposedly, we might be getting their trailer tonight at the concert or some new Final Fantasy VII remake trailer tonight. So, yes, um, expecting a release date, which is very exciting. Um, and that's the world we live in. Uh, thanks everybody for for watching yeah. along, uh, for watching the archive, for listening. This will hopefully be up on all of your audio services uh, of choice uh, via Irrational Passions Presents. Um, thank you, Mike and Scott, as always, for joining me. Uh, you can follow them, Solid Snake 120 for Scott, uh, Mike, IP underscore for Mike. Uh, I'm Alfighter27. Uh, we will be tweeting, I'm sure, a lot about E3 this next week. So look for that. Oh, yeah. um, check out rationalpatch.com for all the stuff that we do. Uh, and uh, tune in next time for uh, Square Enix post show coverage and then more and more and more E3 conversations yeah. to come. Um, so thanks, everybody. Have a good one. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye.